I know you're gonna dig this. Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to Dre Racing. And today we got some Fiesta ST content. And this is gonna be one another one of those where uh, we're trying to make more power. So today we have a fuel performance uh, upgraded fuel pump. It's a pretty hefty thing. I don't know what this looks like compared to a stock one. But uh, as of right now, without the high pressure fuel pump, this probably won't gain me a whole lot of horsepower. Uh, maybe a little bit. I, I guess uh, we'll have to go get uh, revisions on the tune and everything to see what we can do with it, along with running more boost. Uh, but having this fuel pump and having the high pressure fuel pump, which will hopefully be coming here soon, will allow me to run straight E85 which would be a lot more uh, convenient than mixing E30, E40, E50 like guys normally do. Um, so that's the main goal with it. I was told it's pretty easy to do. And, uh, you know, thanks to Dizzy Tuning for giving me a tune for this and also giving me a few tips and tricks so that I guess I don't know what he's talking about at the moment, but when we come to them trying to get, it, get the old one out or put this one in, we will see. So yeah, let's go see what we got to do. So just a uh, quick thing also, uh, in case you didn't know, this being a directed, uh, direct injected engine, it does have two fuel pumps. Uh, it has this high volume fuel pump in the tank, which feeds the mechanical high pressure fuel pump uh, in the front. Like I said, we'll be replacing later. So, th so this uh, fuel pump kind of supports that fuel pump. So like I said, probably won't give me more horsepower right now, but like I said, it'll support E85 later, give me all that more uh, volume. Well, uh, so this is where the fuel pump goes. Obviously there's a protective like uh, grommet over the top. I don't know what it takes to get this off. Never tried, oh. Well, I guess you just pull up a little bit. And, was that a mouse nest? Oh, that's not looking good. Yeah, you might have some mice, so. Well, I guess we'll. Uh, Hopefully they can get in the wires. Yeah, let me get, get this cleaned up. We'll get back to you. Yeah, this was a little gross. Um, now, let's see. Pretty dirty in there. Looks like we have a, uh, I don't know if you get a good angle. There's a clip right here for the wiring harness to it. Looks like it needs to come out. And there's just a little button there. Pull straight up and then remove the, the mouse. <laughs> the mouse fluff. Finish cleaning that. Maybe we'll get some compressed air and blow the dirt out. Yeah. That way we don't drop anything in the fuel tank. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. And it looks like... How many fuel lines? Is it just one or is there just a return? Just this right here. Just one? Yeah, it looks like this thing, this thing slides up and pulls off. Oh, that should be simple enough. Let's get this cleaned up, though, so we don't get any dirt in there. Yeah. All right. Well, I got this pulled up, and I pulled it out, and gas shot everywhere. And it might still. There's pressure on there. So, um, let's get some paper towels in there and towel and. Yeah, let's see if we can relieve the pressure. You, um, could be a Schrader valve under the hood we can hit. Okay. So we did manage to find a vacuum, clean it up. How bad is that? It stopped. Okay. There is some gas though. <laughs> yeah. So I got this uh, brass punch here because uh, when I'm hammering on it, I don't want to spark because there's gas and brake clean <laughs> up top now. Uh, but there's this little ring at the top kind of holding the fuel pump down that needs, there's, I don't know, there's little notches in there all the way around the hammer counterclockwise and then I guess uh, pull out and I guess it's kind of a bear to get it out of this hole um, so I guess we're going to try that and uh, see where that gets us oh 
Well, that was an absolute bear. Um, I don't know if you can see on these tabs, there's like little ridges and they would seem to go and then it'll get stuck because it's on the next ridge. There's like, I don't, looks like there's only two, but there's like three total with that it fights the entire time. So it will eventually go. Now it is loose. Oh, so I, I moved it enough and now it's uh, popped everything up. Maybe do this with the uh, less full fuel tank because I got about three quarter tank in here. So I don't know if that's going to matter all that much. Or... So Ricky, you said you couldn't remove that ring, but maybe you can slide the ring under like this direction or something. A different, maybe different direction, and yeah. I can hang on to while you swap the pumps out. Okay, so because this piece didn't want to come out, we kind of had it so each of these notches on each side were over and i think you could have pulled it really hard and maybe bent this and got it out kind of recommend by just we have these big channel locks you could probably get any other pliers on there and kind of bent up on both sides uh it might affect this uh grommet a little, a little bit going back in but maybe we can massage that back down so it might not be a big deal otherwise that is not coming out unless you guys know the way or if you're a professional ford mechanic and hey this is how we do it in shop but that's the way we just did it. So now, got everything cleaned up a little bit more. Now, uh, this with our full tank of gas. Let's see about pulling Do you want to get out. something to catch any fuel coming off of that? Maybe we get a coffee can or something. Oh, that might be a good idea. Yeah. Man, I couldn't have picked it for the worst time to do this, huh? <laughs> so you could probably use any container for this, but we have this old uh, Folgers can. And it's just uh, big enough around. To where I think once I pull this out, fuel line. Yeah, that's that's full of fuel, so nice and slow. So you can drain through it. Oh, you um, got the floats. The, you're gonna fight that float. Come off. Take it with it. Tip it. Oh. Well, that was not cool. Um, tip the, the gas whole, isn't draining out of it. Okay, so, so. Uh, lever the float all the way up, it'll, and then the whole thing will sit in the can. There you go. Well, it's about all it's got. All right, and set it in the can. Let's get it to the bench. All right, so we do need uh, to move the fuel the the float over, and there's a couple tabs that you push them in. This comes almost directly out. Got some wires on top of that. Oh. Not easy, probably. There it is. And then uh, we got to just see how we uh, transfer it over. We might need to move the wires over. I guess uh, we'll get that figured out. And this is simply just a little plug. Now the new one is right there. And uh, there is a couple of prongs in there. So we still do have a <laughs> float that'll work. But I think... Uh, it's a matter of pull, pushing that tab down like any other connection that doesn't ever want to come off. Luckily, this is not a rusted out connection that's been under your hood for over 100,000 miles, so it should come out easy. But it's not. All right, that was kind of a bear, um, but it looks like you literally just kind of push that tab in and it'll slide right out. So now we're going to unwind your wire, huh? Yeah. It'll go. Should I plug it in first, then route it, and then put that in there? Or I would I would uh, snap it into place, and then then you know where they end up. Is this the right way? Yeah. It's only, yeah, it's got to be that way. It's only gonna fit one way. Those tabs pop through, and you got it. Yeah, just try not to make it. There we go. That should be it. And then, uh, route this. Oh, that's the way it's going to sit. So, Ricky, is that a Ford thing where all the bolts are unnecessarily long and uh, maybe the wires are unnecessarily long? Yeah, they had to wrap it around a bunch of times, but I guess if you needed to fix it, that would be long than wrong. 
All right, shove her in the hole. It's just the reverse. And I think, yeah, it was kind of sitting that this tab, way. I think that tab that's sitting out, yeah, there you go, rotates to the front. Yeah, it was kind of sitting in this general uh, direction. Why is it not wanting to go down? That deal's spring loaded. Oh. Look and see where that tab is supposed to go. See if you can see that. Oh. That. Yeah, there. So there is a little tab. It's really hard to see. But this uh, piece that's jutting out on there. Uh, because this is spring loaded, we'll slide in and over that, or I guess under it. All right, I guess I was uh, wrong. The little tab does not, it just kind of looked that way, but um, kind of have it sitting that way. That's about where, right Fuel where that line lines lines up. up. Yeah, let's get that ring on there. Yeah, let's see how so much gonna... that's going to be. Hey, that was easy, Ricky, except <laughs> the ring is upside down. Yeah, so before you put it back, make sure it's flipped the right way. Hey, if it's worth doing once, it's worth doing twice. Okay, it took, probably do this by yourself, but kind of a two-man job. Someone hold down the fuel pump while someone else uh, gets the ring kind of all set there. And then, uh, yeah, like before, we are using brass to prevent spark obviously, and then uh, hammer it back till it's kind of sealed back in place. All right, just like that, uh, it's back in. Um, like I said we did bend these up a little bit. This is a race car for me, so I don't really care. We're putting the, the bench seat back in, so even if yours is all bent up, probably won't ever see it. Um, but we did kind of get a flatter, so now just uh, let's get this electrical connection back on there, clicked in. And uh, let's kind of massage this uh, grommet back in there. Just like that, pretty easy job. Probably didn't take us more than an hour. If you knew what we were doing right away and weren't uh, you know, trying to film and get things figured out, probably could be, have done 15, 20 minutes, really. So yeah, it was pretty, pretty simple job. Pretty simple. Um, but yeah, the next thing I got to do, which I'm not going to show you is, uh, with this pump, you need a tune because you are getting a lot more fuel on the low end, like we talked about before. So I'm going to upload my tune from Dizzy Tuning. Once again, thanks for, to, uh, him for providing the tune for me. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So, uh, if you guys have any questions on your own or anything else, uh, Fiesta build related, uh, be sure to ask in the comments, and I'll be sure to ha be happy to help. So yeah, like, subscribe, see you in the next one. Goober.